All right, welcome back. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from off the press, we'll be looking at something that's been trended, you know, uh, the hashtag uh, horrible bosses. But specifically, we'll be looking at the employees, all right? And we have a guest uh, joining us, uh, uh, Messi um, Agu. Let us give me a bit of, an, of a background there. An employment relationship is... An employment relationship is established between employer and employee when a person performs work or services under certain conditions in return for remuneration. With the varying laws governing employment-related matters in Nigeria, some of these employment laws include the Nigerian Labor Act, the Pensions Act, the Industrial Training Act, Employee Compensation Act, Trade Union Act, among others. Now, toxic workplaces in Nigeria have been a hot topic on the internet with many revelations about the negative influence on employee-employer relationships. How much of protection uh, does, uh, does the employment law provide for the Nigerian worker? What does the Labor Act say about uh, employees' rights? We have uh, Messi Abu uh, joining us. Uh, Good morning, thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Yeah, so uh, for quite some time now, this hashtag, um, horrible bosses, you know, um, has been trending all over the internet. But let's just talk about uh, the employer-employee relationship. Ordinarily, it should be a win-win situation. You know, so we have various laws in Nigeria. Would you say the Nigerian law uh, provides uh, enough um, protection you know, for the employees? Yes, um, the Nigerian laws, we have beautiful laws in Nigeria that provides for um, protection for employees. So the only problem with Nigeria is that um, they, we lack implementation of these laws. And the employees don't even know about these laws. They don't know about the protection they have under these laws. So employees are just too quick to sign contracts of employment. They are just too quick to begin a position without checking the nitty gritties of what that position or what that company or establishment has for them. So that is why we have such situations and employees may just be there, you know, trying to like find ways to know their rights when they would have just checked their contract of employment or checked the laws that should govern those employment contracts. Well, Okay, well, some of the concerns that's been raised as regards, um, I mean, of course, in recent time, even up until yesterday, you had different sector of the economy. You had the entertainment as a yesterday. Uh, Nollywood was also in the space with the horrible boss experience and what have you, that hashtag still ongoing. And do you think that the laws that we have in Nigeria, just like we have mentioned in the, that background, uh, still, you know, protect and talks about or spells out um, some of these issues that some a lot of persons have raised on the internet. Majorly, you know, there's there's a word for it: toxic workplace, and that's been it. So you have issue where uh, employees are verbally abused. Uh, you have all sort going going on. Uh, so do you think that this loss that we have um, cuts across and protects uh, the employers from this kind of I mean, employees from this kind of um, hazards? Well, yeah, the laws protect, and now, um, beautifully, we have the National Industrial Court where people can go and um, institute actions against the employees or workplaces. So, um, apart from the toxic workplaces, the verbal abuse, the National Industrial Court rules also provides for situations of sexual harassment in workplace. So, there may not be, there may not be a law like the Labor Act, the Employee Compensation Act. There may not be any specific law regards, regarding the sexual harassment in workplace, for example. But the National Industrial Court rules provides for steps, even as little as um, verbal communications, not just touching, not just rape, but where um, an, employ an employer is making some kind of verbal, sexual um, advances to the employee, or maybe just sending nude pictures to an employee, those cases can arise and an employee can use that to sue or institute an action against an employer. So, so wouldn't you say that, you know, the laws that we have are not very clear? I mean, um very explicit and very exact and definite about some of these issues, just like you have mentioned. Now, and if you look at the hashtag, it's been ongoing, uh, not necessarily having so much of sexual harassment, 
but mostly you have issue of maltreatment you have issue of verbal abuse confrontations and uh, the list is almost endless if you want to look at it don't you think that at this point we we'll begin to say that the nigerian law the labor arts uh, these laws are very uh, you're talking about the issue of ambiguity now well yes so because the most of the laws we have just govern um compensation um money how salaries are paid and all of that so, so they don't govern this part just as you said they don't really um, stipulate they are not clear as to toxic environments so i think there's another part um the laws our LM, national assembly and lawmakers should look into because we just have some of these things are just embodied in the international labor convention mm. which is not yet ratified in nigeria so it doesn't have any legal basis because it cannot be relied it's not an enabling law so we just the national industrial court can just make reference to it even though nowadays the national industrial court um, adopts it because of their powers they have under section 254c of the constitution that they can um for best practices they can rely on international standards for best practices but even at that it is inconsistent inconsistent with the constitution because it is not an enabling law yet so i think that um first of all if the international labor conventions can be ratified in nigeria that's the first step to making this um these issues concerning horrible bosses and toxic environments to be um, placed to be legal in such a way that um, employers will not have a right to say okay so you don't have any case for me you don't have a case against me even if i do this or do that so i think that's the first step ratifying the international labor conventions in nigeria and also making specific laws concerning these things so that employer employees will have a right of their own and then um, uh, making these laws known to employees because some of us some of them i'm an employee myself so some <laughs> of the employees if you're not careful you may just um feel like okay i don't have any right i just have to manage and couple with the economic situation in nigeria an employee may be scared to say oh i should i institute an action i may not have any job elsewhere waiting for me so those are the things that should be put, put in place the government should put them in place make specific laws clear laws that will make uh, enable the employees to have to know their rights mm -hmm. and know that these things are clearly stated for them but then i believe it should be um, a two-way street it should be um, a win-win situation uh, employer-employee relationship which is where the human resource management you know you know come in because most times um, most people just believe is um, uh, I work for you at the end of the month uh, I should get paid shouldn't it go beyond um, um, just um, working for pay to relationship of um, knowing uh, about um, the mental health, uh, other aspect of uh, the employer or even the employee, so there will be some sort of um, symbiotic relationship. Yeah, I got you. So, um, aside being a legal practitioner, I'm also a certified human resource person, yeah. though not um, seriously in practice yet. Yeah. So, but I understand the fact that um, for establishments that have human resource persons they ensure they try as much as possible to ensure that they know the needs of the employees as regards the needs of the employers because definitely some places are some workplaces are toxic not necessarily because of the employer uh, the employees are toxic you know amongst themselves mm -hmm. so you That's see an employee yeah. an employee who is maybe a superior to the employee so a fellow employee and it makes the place so terrible and but the subordinate to work exactly so and it's not necessarily so the person can come out to say oh my boss is horrible but when you look at it it's not really the boss mm. it's a fellow employee Maybe just a line manager or something. exactly mm. so if uh, some places cannot afford human resource persons some p places just feel okay there's no need to have a human resource person so um in such situations i've worked in a place where or should i say i'm working in a place where um, we have to though we have human resource persons but sometimes depending on how maybe the output of work is we have to go outside to consult to bring in consultants you understand to like check the needs of the people to check the needs because when you realize that the output of work is not as as it used to be you want to know what's wrong with these employees yeah. so in such situations so it's it's a two-way thing apart from the laws these employers should be sensitized 
in a way that they should know that, okay, the mental health of your employees is also something that you need to put into consideration if you want your business to grow. And some just feel, oh, I pay you, so no matter what I do, you have to work for me the way I want you to work for me. So aside the laws that govern these things, there should be sensitization and there should be enforcement agencies to put, that will put in place these things to say, okay, that like to look into the way we have NAVDAC that look into manufacturing Regulation. and all of regulations. We have a, an agency that regulates this employee and employees, not just the labor union. You understand? You just have um, other agencies that will look into this and maybe go from company to offices to offices to make sure that these things are put in place for the employees. Okay. Um, let's also look at it. You know, in the course of this conversation, you've talked about the fact that a lot of Nigerians are not in the know of their rights, uh, you know, as a Nigerian worker. Can you please take us through, you know, what a worker should know? Now, let's not forget that you have the private sector. Yeah. You also have the public sector. Of course, you're talking about those who are working for the government and those who are in the private sector. Uh, can you please take us through what, you know, Nigerian workers in different sectors should know? Okay, so um, the Labour Act is one that governs, you know, everybody. And then apart from the Employee Compensation Act, which is basically about um, employees who got injured or have any issues arising from work. Now, mo basically, in a workplace, especially nowadays, we have the contract of employment, which governs. So when you have a contract of employment that has all of those things stated there. Which things? Your period of work your salary, your pension, and every other thing, that every other thing you're supposed to be doing in the workplace. So everything has to be clearly stated out in a contract, everything. Yes. So um, due to the fact that most establishments have the HR personnel right now, so even if it's not stated in your contract of employment, there will still be um, an, an HR, HR, yes, an HR policy manual that will stipulate it for you. But the Labor Act also stated that it states that if you're not given such, there should be a written statement within three months of your employment. And that written statement should contain all of those things that you're supposed to know. It should contain the name of the employer. It should contain the, your work prescription. It should also contain your duration of work. If you'll be working from Monday to Friday or Monday, Monday to Saturday. And the Labor Act also provides that for every week, for you, you are entitled to one day rest. So you see some persons work from Monday to Saturday and they complain. Some work from Monday. So the, the Labor Act stipulates that you have to work, for, if you're working for a week, you have to have a 24-hour rest. That's one day. Mm -hmm. So luckily, some offices have Monday to Friday mm -hmm. where you have the weekend to yourself. Yes. So, but the mistake we often make as employees is we have a contract of employment. Most times, some people complain about um, working extra hours over time. And you don't read your contract of employment because I, I know that there are some contracts of employment that stipulates that Monday to Friday and every other time where you're supposed to work if the need arises. Something yeah. like that. There's a clause that is usually put in there. And then employees come to complain about working overtime. So that is why it's good to, for employees to know that, okay, before you sign any contract of employment, you need to look at the integrities of that contract you're signing mm. before you have them because there's an exception to everything stated in the, most of the things stated in the Labor Act, mm. that where there's a contract of employment and it has been signed by the employee and the employee has a copy of that contract of employment, then some of the things within the Labor Act will not apply. What will apply will be the contract of employment. Okay, but, but where it is not clearly stated about overtime, uh, for instance, uh, you're just told on the, uh, maybe you're supposed to do a 40 um, hour week or something, and uh, sometimes because of um, lacuna here and there, you're expected to do some more, and it's not really clearly stated. Do you have a right to demand for an overtime payment or something? Yes, you do. You have a right to demand. It's under the Labor Act. You have a right to demand for working extra hours. You even have a right to demand for, like, the Labor Act also provides that where you're working for more than six hours in a day, you have a right to more than one hour break okay. within that space of time. Unless there's something, there's, there are circumstances where that would, it would be impossible for the one hour break to apply. So if you're working for more than six hours in a day, you should be able to take one hour break. And the Labor Act specifically stated that it shouldn't be less than one hour. Yeah. So if you're working like that, you have a right to demand for your pay. 
All right. Okay, so um, let's begin to, you know, look at the issue of salaries and payment. I mean, we talk about the issue of minimum wage. And if you are in Nigeria, if you've been following, you know, the conversation, you know that the Nigerians, especially those in the public sector, have been talking about 30,000 or minimum wage. And some states are saying, oh, we don't have resources to pay. We cannot pay minimum wage because states are differently endowed and uh, states have different capacity. Now, the law that surrounds or that talks about minimum wage, does it also, you know, protect or does it cut across, you know, the private sector or it's just limited to, you know, the public sector? For that, it's just limited to the public sector. Mm. So there are no laws for it. Yes, when you look at it holistically, it provides for just the public sector. So the private sectors they have, because you see some employees earning 20,000 naira, and they do so much work. It's just like a place in Lagos, you see employees earning like 20,000 naira, and in a month they spend more than that in transportation. So it it's, it's applies to just the private sector, if you look at it holistically. Okay, but then again, uh, like I said before, it is a two-way street, uh, the employees, um, have their right and so um, uh, do the employers you know so just how do you strike a balance how do you also ensure that um, the employers too are also protected uh, from maybe some um, unwanted act or some unscrupulous act by um, some employers who may just want to uh, use some loopholes and may not necessarily want to do the work Okay, so um, basically the rights that the employees have at the moment is just to institute actions in court. That is what they have at the moment. So, and the National Industrial Court is, a kind, of, is kind of liberal in the sense that it makes so much laws, it has so much protection for the employees. So the only problem is just the Nigerian factor, in the sense that when someone thinks of how to institute an action, how long it will take before that action is determined and all of that, the person may just no, want to share No, you didn't get me, I was asking about the employer themselves. Oh, the employer? Yes. Okay, so the only things the employers can do is to have a, a good welfare package for the employees. Mm. And that includes having an HR personnel in the system so because when the that's another thing about sensitization because if these employers are not sensitized a lot of employers just feel that they're doing employees a favor by even giving them employment so if they are not sensitized or if there are no agencies that will enforce these things the employers will these things will keep going on and on and on so it is something that laws should be clearly stated for the employers enforcement agencies should be there to ensure that these things are put in place. And then the employer, should, there should be something that before you open an establishment or before you start a business, you should be able to have things in place for the employees. Mm. So because there are no eyes looking at these employers, they just feel like, oh, we can do anything we want to do. And at the end of the month, whatever we give to the employees, you take it. So how do you put a human face to it? Because sometimes uh, issues abound. You know, uh, people might feel disgruntled somehow, they feel maybe they are not um, actually earning enough or maybe their pay is not commensurate with what they do. Sometimes they just may want to stay off work because they feel uh, they are doing more than enough. In that case, what should the employer be doing? Okay, just like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm in a place where we have to get a consultant to come in you know, it's different when, you're, when you have someone in-house that already knows these things. The person may not be, you know, too quick to make decisions and all of that. So we had to go the extra mile to get a, an outside to consult someone to come in and look at the situation. So the person was able to come in, look at the employees, check what they're going through, listen to them. And at the end of the day, there was a kind of win-win balance. You understand? So the welfare of the, um, of the employees were... Um, provided for at least not optim it's not optimally but I would say 80% and everybody it's a win-win situation the employee is happy the employers are happy there's a good output at work so that is th that's one of the things that employers can do in such a situation and also checking for them to also have because like I said earlier employ employers don't have HR persons. They just feel, okay, if you're head of management, you can do the HR work, so just do it. So that is why we have the HR personnel. Mm. Well, let's, let's also look at it. I, I like us to, you know, I, I think that we have actually stayed with the legal 
you know, part of what the law says and the rights that are protected. Unfortunately, a lot of persons do not understand their rights as employees. And, you know, on the other hand, you also have employers not understanding, you know, what they ought to do. And so it becomes, you know, a, a, a jumbo and all of that. So a lot's going on. But let's look at some of the concern because for the past two days, I think it's something that might just go on for a very long time. You have this space being buzzed with horrible bosses and experiences. You have um, one of the issues that, that, that's been raised and dominated the space is the issue of you have employers beating up employees. And how do you address that? The first question now, that's number one. Uh, the big question for me would be how did we get to that point as a people? Well, I would, I would start by saying it's the economy. Yeah, because e economy, what sense? Because is it something that just happened in 2022 or it's something that's been going on? You no, know, the thing is, when you look at the Nigerian situation, a lot of people are out there looking for jobs. And an employer can just say, oh, if you live here, you may not get another job in the next two years, three years. You understand? So they have that kind of, um, I would like to say, um, orientation. Yes, that's what I think. They, I think they have that kind of orientation that, yes, I'm doing you a favor by putting you here. So anything I tell you to do, you have to do it. So they, and then the employees also have that fear that, oh, I should just manage this one I have instead of just leaving. So it takes someone who has a lot of courage to say, okay, I'm leaving this place. Even if I don't have a job, I'll sit at home till I get a better place. So that's, I, I think that's the orientation a lot of people have because people are out there looking for jobs and they feel, okay, if you leave within the next one hour, another person is there to replace you. But that, that doesn't mean you have to stay at the job when you know that um, you're not actually getting your utmost and then um, you're almost bullied. Sometimes we've heard of, of cases where employees are being threatened, um, they've been beaten by supervisors and bosses just because um, the employees feel that um, where they're working at that particular time might just be their last uh, moment of hope. So that is why we have the courts for people. So um, I think the, the basic thing is just for... Are we talking about the regular courts? Yes. Or the special courts? No, we have the National Industrial Court that deals with cases about employer-employee relationship. So mm -hmm. it's so wild. Their, power, their powers are so wild. So they have powers concerning this assault, battery, yeah. um, compensation, sexual harassment as i said earlier so anything that concerns employer employee relationship you take it to the national industrial court and the as i said earlier they are so liberal with um, um employees because they are basically there for the interest of the employees so but the issue we have in nigeria today is a lot of people don't want to institute actions against employee in fact a lot of people don't want to even institute actions for their rights mm -hmm for the enforcement of their rights. So let's, if, let's just depart from the employee relationship, even just your rights as a the human being. Case, yes. yes, people, a lot of people don't want to. And a lot of people find it hard to, you know, talk to a lawyer about their rights. A lot of people just want to swallow it in and say, well, I don't want any problems. Let me just leave with it. So I think the, the basic thing is for if employees will stand up to their rights to say, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is how, there are a lot of ways to institute illegal actions against these employees, these employers. And in such situations, you realize when two or three employers start doing that, employers will take a back seat and want to, they will try to um, meditate again to know what's going on. Mm. No, but you know, like this particular case that I mentioned, you have a case where uh, the boy uh, made this complaint and he talked about the fact, I and mean, we're talking about employees now, Yes. Employers beating up employees, and in this particular case, he was handed over to the police, and the police malhand malhandled him, you know, in the sense that they used woods, you know, to hit him, and to a point where he had a gun pointed to his head. Um, quite sad. But you have also mentioned the fact that we do not have specific laws. That the laws that we have just talks about compensation, uh, you know, salaries and wages, contracts, and does not necessarily cater for some of these cases, issue of battery, however, it is abuse, which at the end of the day, you have a common language called, you know, toxic workplace or, or um, you know, toxic bosses and supervisors and what have you. Um, so it, it's really, really sad. We're hoping that beyond May, because every May, it seems like we get to talk about oh, the workers' day. But it feels like the workers days always talked about those in the public sector and maybe the private sector is not even carried on, you know, carried along in all of this. But moving forward now, 
Um, or what would you say would be the way forward for us as a people? Now, following that particular space, joining the conversation and reading tweets and comments from some Nigerians, some people say instead of coming to the internet or coming to Twitter, that's the microblogging you know platform, and begin to rant. Why don't you quit? Do you think that you know? quitting a job, you know, because you are in a toxic workplace or you're in a place where the working conditions are not favorable solves the problem? Well, I don't think it does because that's, that's the thing we talk about, talking out, speaking out. So I think, um, yes, if you, if you feel the place threatens your life, your mental health, because a lot of youths today, we are going into serious depression. And that is one area that is being overlooked. So I, I feel you can quit, but that doesn't stop you from speaking out. Because, yes, this, um, the hashtag horrible bosses, they started, um, it was just one person who brought up the conversation, others joined and all of that. So if those people didn't speak up, I don't think we'll be here today having this conversation. Absolutely. So I, I think um, no matter what, even if you quit, you should speak up because the next person can still suffer that thing you're suffering. So it shouldn't be a case of you just saying you want to stay quiet, you just want to quit. Yes, you can move away for your own self, for your life, but you should also talk about it. Speak to someone who can help the next person that will be coming after you. So, so what would be the way forward now? I mean, you, we understand that we're human beings. For me, I feel like um, toxic is, uh, no place is actually toxic. For instance, this place is not toxic. It can't be toxic on its own if we are not toxic people. So when you have toxic people come to a place, it becomes toxic. And sometimes you have situations when you have the boss. I mean, when you say the big boss, the big boss might just be the big boss doing his things, but you also have uh, those in, in the line of you know duty um, because they're toxic. It begins to trickle down and it makes every other person very uncomfortable. So how, how do we now address it, understanding that there are a lot of people involved in causing toxic? You also look at government, uh, what laws can be put in place. You look at uh, the employees themselves, because you can't take them out of the equation. Like one would say, you have some employees who would frustrate the efforts of the bosses or those on the line. So in all of this, how do we address the situation? So we, become, we, we can become you know, a better country, uh, we become, because if we become a better country, then we have a better workforce, we have a better you know, productivity level becomes you know, top notch, and everybody's happy. Okay, so I think the way forward for the government, we should have specific laws that provide for these things. And then, as I said before, there should be specific agencies that regulate this um, companies, establishment of companies or whatever. And then going down to the workplaces, I think there should be an orientation for everybody. So that is why the HR persons are important because there should be a kind of appraisal of people's mental health. Because you see a situation whereby an, um, an employee can bring his own personal issues to the workplace. You know, maybe the person has issues at home. Uh, something frustrating the person and the person brings it down to the office and uses it to frustrate the next person under him or her. So in that situation you see that it goes down and then the employees themselves are the ones causing the problem in the workplace. So there should be an orientation. The government should make specific laws. There should be agents, um, enforcement agencies for these people. And then the, employ the employer should ensure that their workplace is a very um, conducive conducive place and in the sense that they should make sure no matter how little they should make sure they try and get an HR person that will be in charge of human welfare in such situation even whether annually or quarterly there should be um, a kind of appraisal of people's mental health check people speak to them privately know what they're going through because employer employers just feel okay come to the office do All my right. work and go so All that's right. Thank you Thank so you much, Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Indeed, it has, actually, it has actually been a very wonderful discussion because um, employers, employee, uh, they all need to know their rights. Uh, it is a win-win situation. It is about uh, managing relationships uh, at the workplace, even beyond the workplace. Uh, so when you take it home, when you come back to the office, you ensure that um, everyone is happy at the end of the day. Sure. Yeah, Mercy Agbo has been our guest, and uh, she is uh, a lawyer, and she has joined us to talk about uh, terrible bosses and how the employees write and um, just how you can actually be better uh, to your workplace. It's still a breakfast and plus TV Africa will take a quick break and when we come back we'll be looking at health. It's World Tuberculosis Day. Stay with us. <laughs>